I'll call to order the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. To all persons interested in or affected by the actions of the Zoning Board of Appeals are hereby notified pursuant to Section 11 of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and all amendments thereto that a public hearing on the following appeals will be held on Wednesday, January 10th, 2024 at the times indicated. The Zoning Board of Appeals public hearing will be held by remote participation methods. Public access this meeting shall be provided in the following manner. Real-time access to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting is available by utilizing the Zoom link or telephone number and meeting ID provided. Public comment can be addressed to the Zoning Board of Appeals by utilizing the Zoom link or telephone number and entering the meeting ID. The Zoom link is https colon slash slash town of Barnstable dash us dot zoom dot us slash j slash eight seven five seven zero seven nine seven four two eight or entering or calling 888-475-4499 and entering the meeting ID 875-7079-7428. Applicants, representatives, individuals required or entitled to appear before the Zoning Board of Appeals may appear remotely and may participate through accessing the link or telephone number uh, provided above. Documentary exhibits and or visual presentations should be submitted in advance of the meeting to a Anna.brigham at town.barnstable.ma.us so that they may be displayed for remote public access viewing. Uh, I am going to skip number three because this meeting is not, oh, sorry, this meeting will be replayed uh, via Xfinity Channel 8 or High Definition Channel 1072. It may also be accessed via the Government Access Channel video on demand archives at the Town of Barnstable's website, https colon slash slash streaming. 85.townofbarnstable.us slash cablecast public site slash question mark panel equal sign number one. Copies of the applications are available for review by calling 508-862-4682 or emailing anna.brigham at town.barnstable.ma.us. Uh, so now that's out of the way, we'll call the meeting to order with an introduction of board members. Herb Bodensee. Present. Uh, Paul Pennard. Present. Mark Hansen. Present. <clears throat> Aaron Webb. Present. Uh, Denise Johnson. You're muted, Denise. Okay. Present. There you go. Uh, Larry Hurwitz. Present. Manny Alves. Present. And I am Jake Dewey, Jacob Dewey. Uh, notice to recording this meeting, the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals recorded and broadcast on the Town of Barcelona's Government Access Channel in accordance with MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20. I must inquire whether anyone has recorded this meeting, and if so, to please make their presence known. Seeing none, um, we, we don't have any minutes to approve today. Um, and just for members of the public that are here, we are going to be continuing um, the items before us today for various reasons that we'll get, get to on each item. Um, the first order of old business is appeal number 2023-010. Arista Hyannis LLC has applied for a special permit in accordance with section 240-25B22 and 240-25C10 drive through for a proposed restaurant. The applicant proposed to remodel the former bank building and change the use to a food service establishment with a drive through The subject property is located at 715 West Main Street, Hyannis Mass, as shown on Assessor's Map 249 as Parcel 155. It's located in the Highway Business HB District. Uh, this was continued from May 10, 2023 and July 26, 2023 and September 13, 2023 and November 8, 2023. Members assigned were myself, Jacob Dewey, Paul Pennard, Mark Hansen, Aaron Webb, and Herb Bodenseek. Um, we have received correspondence um, regarding this that um, we want would like it to be in an in-person meeting, and we have an in-person meeting scheduled um, in two weeks. Um, and so we have a a, a uh, request to continue. Does anyone have any discussion on that? Um, Jake, just uh, I, it's it's been known just to reinforce the fact that I I will not be there in person. Correct. Um, and Anna, as it, uh, who are we going to have that was going to call in for in 
I, I believe it was Denise who was yeah. um, present at the uh, hearing. So Denise would fill in for Paul. Okay. okay. And Denise, you're comfortable with that and, and are yes. up to speed if you have any questions yeah. for staff in the meantime. I remember you know, the, can... the prior hearing. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any more discussion regarding that, the continuation? No, I just said, I assume we're, we have on the agenda later to talk about our procedures about continuation. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yep. I'll hold my piece. Okay. Okay. So I'll make a move that we um, continue the matter to uh, January 24th at 7.01 p.m. Appeal number 2023-010. Second. Seconds and a roll call vote. Uh, Herb Bodenseek. I'm in favor. Paul Pennard. In favor. Mark Hansen. In favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. Larry Hurwitz. In favor. And Manny Alves. In favor. And I'm also in favor. So that item is continued. Um, next up, we have appeal number 2023-019, Kevin Y and Corey L. Vilsant, Vilsant have applied for a special permit in accordance with section 240-472 accessory dwelling units, ADUs. The applicant seek to remove and replace an accessory structure with a new structure, accessory dwelling unit, ADU. The applicants also seek to modify special permit number 2020-038 to allow further build out of the property for the accessory dwelling unit and additions to the principal dwelling. The subject property is located at 358 Flint Street, Marsons Mills, Massachusetts, as shown on assessor's map 101 as parcel 121. It's located in the residence FRF zoning district. This again was continued from August 23rd, 2023, October 25th, 2023, and December 6th, 2023. Um, members wow. that are assigned were myself, Aaron Webb, Herb Odensee, Paul Pennard, and Denise Johnson. Um, we again have a request from the applicant to continue this item and possible modifications. Anna, are, is that until the 24th or are we gonna push it further? No, um, uh, Attorney Corrine has asked for February 7th, 2024. Okay. All right, does anyone have any discussion about that? I, oh, pardon. I did see another uh, uh, email stating the 24th of January. So are we still on the 7th? Yes, uh, there was a subsequent email um, after that that uh, requested G uh, February 7th, 2024. Okay, I'm all for uh, February 7th, yes. Okay. Could I ask you a quick question? Um, was there something in here where they're going to, are they withdrawing the ADU request totally? Yes. I believe so. So what is left on this then? Big model, big special permit. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. But we'll see. There's time they could withdraw between now and February seventh if they okay. decided to. I just couldn't remember what else there was. Um, so I'll make a motion that we continue appeal number twenty twenty three dash zero one nine to February seventh, twenty twenty four. I second. Paul seconds. Roll call vote on the continuance. Her vote seek. In favor. Paul Pennard. In favor. Mark Hansen. In favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. Larry Hurwitz. In favor. And Manny Alves. In favor. All right. Um, moving on to our last item <clears throat> of old business, appeal number 2023-034. Um, Bay Ridge Realty LLC has applied for a comprehensive permit pursuant to MGL Chapter 40B, Section 20, 21, 22, and 23. The applicant proposes to construct 14 housing units, 24 bedrooms with four detached buildings and associated parking and site improvements on 3.95 acres for rental purposes in accordance with MGL Chapter 40B, 760 CMR. Uh, the unit mix shall consist of six one-bedroom units, six two-bedroom units, and two three-bedroom units. Four of the units will be restricted as affordable for low or moderate income persons. The subject property is located at 900 Old Stage Road, Centerville, Massachusetts, as shown on assessor's 
map 192 as parcel 001. It's located in the residency RC zoning district. This is continued from uh, November 8th, 2023. Uh, members assigned was Paul Pinard, Aaron Webb, Mark Hansen, Manny Alves, and Herb Odense. I was not assigned to that, um, that item. Um, the board is in receipt of a request dated January 2nd, 2024 to continue this to February 7th, 2024. Is there any discussion on the request to continue? Uh, seeing none, I will make a motion to continue um, item 2023-034 to February 7th, 2024. I'll second that. Herb seconds, roll call vote. Herb Bonesy. In favor. Paul Pinard. In favor. Mark Hansen. In favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. Larry Hurwitz. In favor. Manny Alves. I, I am in favor, Mr. Chair, but I guess this is something we're going to talk about in the next agenda item. But the yeah. rules of the board require that the representative of the petitioner make the request in person. It, this applies to this one as well as the prior one. I, I right. don't know if the representatives are on the call, but anyway it, the rules say that after the first request for continuance any subsequent subsequent requests must be made in person so yeah, the, pro the problem is, is that we haven't while well, we've approved the rules we haven't Let, we have let's keep it the process. let's keep let's keep it. discussion to just in a few minutes here let's just i am in favor out. i am in All favor right. <laughs> so um I, appeal number 2023-034 is continued to february 7th 2024 all right, so that is the end of our uh, old business. We do have no new business tonight. Um, we did receive correspondence of a letter from Paul Phelan regarding the demolition request of 307 Main Street. Um, Hyannis, um, I, I don't, I don't think. He, does anyone have anything comments or response to that? Read it. It's done. <laughs> um, uh, matters. Uh, so I guess next up would be. Um, discussing um, Paul's um, information and, and sort of our discussion of rules. Um, I did talk to Jim Kupner today at, at planning staff, um, real late in the day today, shortly before the meeting. Um, we still have not gotten feedback from Kate Conley, the town attorney. Um, he suggested that we possibly get together, that Paul, myself and I get together with her to try to hash this out. Legal department has been really slow. Um, I mean, one of my, my biggest concerns with these continuances is keeping the public informed of things. You know, how is the public supposed to track something that is just, when is it, when are we going to meet on it? When is it going to happen? If it's just going to keep getting continued, especially if people have to come in person to town hall. Um, and he did say one thing, when we have, when someone asks for a continuance, we do have the authority, it has to be mutually agreeable, but to say that we would like the abutters to be re-noticed. Um, before in in enough time before that next meeting um which that that helps me with some of my concerns about these con the continuances um but let's discuss you know any of the items i don't know if we've all been together sort of since paul you put that together so if you want to give us a quick sort of summary of of where we were with it what we were trying to put forward well we we um we all voted and agreed upon what our proposal was. Uh, and then we decided to slip it to legal. Legal is not required to approve it for us to approve it. Legal is, is advice and counsel. And so my suggestion is, is that we proceed with, uh, with a 30 day deadline, drop dead, of officially forwarding it to planning and to uh, uh, building commissioner and then, um, then depending upon what their comments are and legal, you know, we'll give them a 30 day. So there's a drop dead deadline and then we approve it. And subsequently, if they, if they, if they don't have time within 30 days, it becomes our formal rules and regulations. And if they, in the, you know, after that decide that there's something or we decide that something should be changed, then we can change it. I mean, we don't have to wait on them. Great. Anna, do you feel we have the authority to just make that 
decision? Do we need an active town council as well, town elected council? Well, I'm just concerned that the rules and regulations um, should really be reviewed by legal, and I I believe the town council needs to approve them. I'm not totally sure, no, but no. I was I was no, thinking that the um, a policy might be easier for the board to set. I mean, this this can certainly be discussed, um, you know, with Jim Kupfer and legal, but a policy might be better. There's no look the 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 zoning board of appeals is a quasi judicial board, okay. Policy doesn't cut it. It's either part of our official rules and regulations or it's not. Uh, policy does not enter in either the MGLs, the planning board, or the town's code. So I don't know what the policy what what this question about the policy is. Secondly, we have the authority, as I've shown in that to approve our own rules and regulations. We do not need legal's approval, nor do we need planning board's approval. And so that's why I'm submitting, I think it's time to fish or cut bait. We have, we have already approved as a board those rules and regulations. I think it's time for a re public reading and to adopt them. I agree, totally. So I, I guess the step would be to our, our now Town Council liaison, I believe, is Betty Ludkey. So we, she would have to present it to the council, to town council. It doesn't have um, to go to the town committee or the town council. It nothing to do with the town council. It doesn't have to go there. So Paul, can I ask okay. a question? Because that's how I read what you circulated as well. But I wasn't quite sure what the source of those powers are. Is this in the town's bylaws? Like number four under subsection B in, in your draft says what you just said, that that the board has the authority to adopt them. And right. then once adopted, they'll be presented in writing at a regular meeting of the board and, and, and formally put in, in, in place after that. Right. But is that something that, is that authority that's been granted to the board by yes. town right. council? Yeah, I mean, I don't have the documents in front of me, but but the point is that the MGL gives the authority to the board and the planning board gives the authority to the board. I mean, the, the planning board doesn't have to give the authority to the board. The MGL does. It says... That well, the, yeah, that's why I asked the question, because there is no reference to mass law in, in that provision. And frankly, I couldn't find it. So I wasn't sure. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I have to go back into my notes again, which I don't, I'm sorry, Manny. I don't it's okay. Have, no, no. But, I, I, but, I, but I, I certainly wouldn't have said that unless it were true. I believe the town code says, and I I think it's the town code that says it's the planning board. I mean, the uh, zoning board of appeals has the authority to write rules and regulations. Okay. Oh. Could be, is it going to hold here? something? it to the core are we going to get i'm sorry jake you, you cut out there we, we, up. we couldn't hear you um sorry my my uh, internet's a little slow um i i guess i would just be concerned that we would be opening ourselves up for um you know someone to appeal something an applicant to appeal something if, if we our eyes aren't truly dotted and t's crossed on this and and the the person who has to clean that up our legal department that would have to go to court and so I just would want to make sure that they're in agreement with what we're doing, that they feel they can stand that up to someone at court. That's that's my concern. But again, I'm just one vote. You know, one of us could, you know, Paul, you can make a motion. And if it's carries. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jake, they've had six months. I, I don't know what's yeah, going what on. Are they here. Doing? There's a lot of things that are tied up that are very slow in the legal department. I think that's just. Yeah, well, they're, they're not controlling us. We control ourselves. They're the vice counsel. And as I said, they can review it after we've approved it. And if they find a problem with it, that's fine. But there's nothing in there um, that hasn't been, I mean, the research I did is, I don't know, I thought it pretty, in terms of who has authority to do what is stated pretty much in, in uh, the beginning of that. I, I totally agree with Paul, because if you look at this sheet today as an example, I think it must be known among the attorneys and whatever that, well, we'll just put it to another date. 
And without having, I think if they had to come and physically appear and give the reason, uh, it would make more sense because I, it, it, it can't be that there's five or six postponements of an event um, unless someone can explain that their their architect doesn't have the plans done or something. But it's just jerks everybody around, the public and us. But I, I share Jay's concern. I mean, I, I'd like to know, no, no disrespect, Paul. I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, you're right, but, but to have that absolutely ironclad tight that in fact that 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 the board has the authority to promulgate its own rules and have them become effective if that's the case yeah let's proceed i just as i read this I, it, it's not in 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 40a um but if it's in the town code and that's authority that the board has been granted to promulgate its own rules okay let's move on but it, it'd be good to have that verified So, and if you, Paul, and I can really push, can we like can we give Kate a fourteen day deadline here that we can that she gets back to us and gives us her written opinion back on this? Uh, well, um, the board can can do what they feel is is necessary. Um, you know, I I can't promise that she'll get back to you in fourteen days. Yeah. Well, I, I suggest we put a 30-day limit. They got 30 days, either they respond to it or we adopt. So you know, should Jake, we say I'd be happy February to 28th meeting? That we're we're gonna we're going to make a one with or without it, is what I mean, our intentions are. That's reasonable. And honestly, I think it's low risk on this, don't you? I mean, absolutely. At this point, yeah, yeah this is. It's I, mean, our, I think the biggest thing we need to do is make sure that we are able to notice all the attorneys or anybody that might be. I don't know if it's if the obligation is on us or if we just put the information out there and as a courtesy notify who we know is generally in front of the board often or how that works. But well, if anybody who you know for for anybody who files for a special appeal, they get the rules and regulations. Right. Yeah. Right. Plus, plus they're published on the website. Uh, yeah. Okay. So how would Paul? What would you like to do to move forward? Move forward with it. What would your proposal be? That we give them a thirty day from today deadline. Yes, I, I would propose that since we have already approved these, that we officially adopt them within 30 days uh, after noticing uh, the building commissioner, the planning board, and legal. Okay. That's reasonable. So, so Anna, you would, you would forward this to say that, I guess, that, that the boards made, we'll take a vote, that we make a motion um, that we're gonna we're gonna forward these we're gonna adopt these rules effective February 10th and any new applications would be on that date would apply it would apply to any new applicants. Well, it would be one of the next dates, February 7th or February 28th. Well, okay. So, so in terms of just when it would take take effect, or if we'd have another vote on it. Well, that it would take effect. It would take effect. We've already voted on it. Oh, okay. Okay. So it would take effect with any applications made after February 10th, 2024. Okay. I don't think we can, Paul, do you think we can apply it to someone who already has an application that that's already been submitted in the record? Uh, anything after probably makes sense. Yeah. I think probably just just to be safe, we would say after after the date that we formally um, produce these as rules and regulations. Okay, and then and then that gives the opportunity on our February seventh meeting potentially for Attorney Conley to come in or between now and then to say, hey, you need to modify or whatever, and we could take a vote at the February seventh meeting to modify or. You know, bring them into whatever compliance she thinks is appropriate, or worst case, rescind them. Right, and and in addition to that, the whoever controls the internet 
um, would have to include these in the zoning board's rules and regulations that appear uh, appear on the internet website. I think that's relatively quick, right, Anna? They can make things can be uploaded pretty quickly. Oh if, yes. If approved. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, so, so let's just take just to to clarify, we're going to um, put our rules and regulations into effect to any applicants applications um, received after February 10th, 2024. That's the, the motion on the table. Yes. Do we, we need a, a second, second on that? I second. think it's best we do. Sure. Um, okay, so roll call vote. Herb Odenseek. I'm in favor. Paul Pennard. In favor. Mark Hansen. I'm also in favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. Larry Hurwitz. In favor. Manny Alves. In favor. And I am also in favor. So Anna, will you just make sure, well, we'll talk before the January 24th, but we'll make sure that we have just a revisit of this on the agenda for February 7th, just so we're just saying, yep, we'll, and we'll make sure the public knows that that's going into effect, just as a reminder, three days beyond that, um, and if, it, if nothing's changed. Sure. And, and, and Jake, if we, you know, if if we can arrange what you propose with respect to a, you know, a conference call or something prior to that, to that, that would be fine. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that's what we've been looking for for quite some time now. So hopefully we can get Kate on the phone and, and you know, run through it Yeah. Um, with her. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jake, a question, the, 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 comment you made at the beginning about uh you know multiple requests for continuances we should ask the applicant to uh re-notice the abutters that's not in these rules you're saying that should just be a condition to granting the request is that uh, i mean it? it's something it, it's something we have the option to do it has to be from what i understand mm -hmm. from from mgl has to be mutually agreeable with the applicant right. but if someone comes in and says hey we want to continue this will you guys give us one more we can say, yes, we'll give you another continuance. However, you're going to need to re, we'll agree to it mutually that if you'll re notif notify all the abutters um, that this is the next hearing and um, okay. et cetera, et cetera, which is just, it's just nice something to have in our pocket. I don't think we need to have it in the rules and regs, but it's just something we know that we have the ability to do Got it. Um, for some of these items. Certainly when we see these agenda items come up that are highly contested, I mean, it makes sense, obviously, in some of these smaller ones. We don't want to have you know petitioners incur a lot of expense, but uh, I mean, yeah. frankly, if it's and I'm thinking of the one that, that's contentious before us, maybe going beyond the abutters is something we ought to consider as well. Let me republic. Yeah, we right. Yeah, yeah, we could republic notice in the paper yeah. and and yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. Any other discussion or any other matters? Not. No, I was. I was just going to ask one thing of the my fellow board members. I noticed that the town council has moved their meetings to six o'clock, and um, I I know it's kind of an odd night to bring it up since this is like one of the shortest meetings we've ever had, but I'm wondering if if the group is in favor or not in favor of starting at six instead of seven, so that if we do have a prolonged agenda, we you know it kind of gets us out of there a little earlier. I would have a hard time and doing that. I have you children. would. Well, I have children that are young. Oh, but I oh I thought I thought that might be easier. For them. <laughs> and Anna, I believe don't we, wouldn't we overlap with uh, HHD uh, HHDC or something? One of the historic boards meets at six thirty or six before us sometimes just in terms of tv scheduling there there could be a conflict i'm not sure um that it's a conflict every single meeting night but there there's a lot of other meetings happening especially tonight so it would be you know sort of a case by case basis i mean i it's always been seven i i think yeah. we leave it unless there is sort of a public outcry that our time isn't good for the public or something of that nature or if our town council liaison would prefer to see us moved i don't know no, i just i just thought in terms of like some things that go on later and later but um i right now the last few meetings have been pretty short so i i don't have a lot of evidence that we're suffering into the midnight hours yeah 
I mean, we'll we'll try to keep our agendas, you know, just pushing, try to keep the agendas set so that we're only here for two to two and a half hours is the ideal. Okay. Um, it's it's not so. a biggie for me. It's just okay. But no, it's always open for discussion for sure. Okay. Um, anyone else? Uh, next meeting, January twenty fourth, twenty twenty four. That is in person. Uh, and I think, as you said, we have a very full schedule for that night. So that one may go on a little while. Yes. Um, and just a reminder, the Arista public comment is still open. Um, so we will hopefully hear public comment during that time in person and, and letters to us as well. I have and then, a question. Oh, uh, this sure. Is Jean, this is Jean sure. Rimmers, and it's directed to Anna. Can you just say your address for the record, please? Yes, 97 Outpost Lane, Centerville. And it's regarding the old stage development at 900 Old Stage Road. I'm going to butter. And okay, we just directed... can't hear any public comment on it right now. Just If it's around scheduling, that's fine, but nothing other beyond scheduling. That is, I just had a quick question for Anna. If she had yep. received my email with the second letter. And I tried to, I tried to open it tonight and it wouldn't open. And when did you send that, Jean? Uh, December, I believe it was, hold on, let me get my glasses. It was December 13th, you and I spoke. Oh, I said, you yeah. told me it would be posted a week before the meeting. Yeah. And I tried to look for it tonight, but it wouldn't open up. Well, the, the meeting materials are not on the website because everything was continued tonight. Continued, continued. So it but will be up for, for February. For the next meeting that it's scheduled, all the meeting materials will be on the website. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, Jake, a, a question yep. again. Um, I had here that um, the in-person meeting was on the 17th. Am I wrong there? It got it got moved. The applicant had that we were trying to accommodate re requested moving it to the 24th. Okay, so the 24th is in person. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so Anna, I won't be, um, I'm trying to, I will not be there for the 24th. <clears throat> yes. Okay, so I'm sorry, Jake, though, I just wanted to- No, no problem, that's, yeah, and I think we agreed that Denise was gonna be um, filling in for you um, yep. on that application. Okay, uh, so upcoming meetings, January 24th, February 7th, and February 28th, um, and we can make a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second? Second. second. Uh, roll call vote on adjournment. Herb Bodensee. I'm in favor. Paul Pennard. In favor. Mark Hansen. In favor. Aaron Webb. In, in favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. Uh, Larry Hurwitz. In favor. And Manny Owls. In favor. And I am also in favor. So we are adjourned. <laughs>